If you're looking for an easy slow cooker chicken recipe, it is hard to beat the salsa verde chicken. You literally just toss everything into a crock pot or slow cooker, and then a few hours later, you've got the most flavorful and tender chicken that you can easily shred with two forks, and then add that back into the slow cooker to mix with the spicy, smoky, and tangy salsa verde. This is a great year-round recipe, and if you're wondering how to serve it up, well, just keep watching. The first and main ingredient in this recipe is, of course, the salsa verde. And you can buy store-bought salsa verde. That is totally fine if you wanna make this recipe even faster and easier. But I will say that my homemade salsa verde recipe just puts this one to shame. The homemade version is so good. Now, if you can't find salsa verde in the store, you could also use a green enchilada sauce as well in a pinch, but I will show you how to make salsa verde at home. It will taste a million times better. To make the homemade salsa verde, you'll need about 10 medium tomatillos. Tomatillos are often mistaken for green tomatoes, but they're not tomatoes, even though their name does translate to little tomato. I know it's confusing, but just think of them as a close relative in the nightshade family, but their outer husk makes them a unique fruit in their own right. You'll remove the outer husk from each tomatillo and place them on a baking sheet. Now, most of my tomatillos were much smaller than usual today, so I did place a few extras on the baking sheet, but they should be more similar in size to that bigger one I have on the left there. After you've got those all laid out, you'll add two serrano or jalapeno peppers to the baking sheet, depending on how hot and spicy you'd like it. Serrano peppers are a bit hotter than jalapeno peppers. And then lastly, add four unpeeled garlic cloves. Turn the top broiler on in your oven and place the oven rack about six inches below the broiler. Broil everything for about five to six minutes or until it starts to get a little charred, then use tongs to flip everything over and broil for another five minutes. The peppers and tomatillos will get a bit wrinkly and the tomatillos will release their juice and that's all good, that's what you want. Once that's done, remove it from the oven and let this sit at room temperature for about five minutes or until everything is cool enough to handle and then slice the stems off the peppers and place them in a food processor or blender, either one works. I should also add that if you'd like to reduce the spicy heat even further on the peppers, you can use just one pepper instead of two or slice them in half and remove their seeds before adding them to the food processor. It's really up to you on how spicy you like things. Then transfer the tomatillos to the food processor and remove the outer skin on the garlic and add those. One thing you don't wanna forget is to add all of those tomatillo juices from the sheet pan to the food processor. It's lots of flavor and you don't want that to go to waste. So I just tip the sheet pan over the food processor and use my hands to scrape it all down. You could use a food scraper as well, but since my hands are already sticky from transferring everything to the food processor, I figured might as well put them to good use. To those items, you'll add half of a medium onion that you've diced, one third cup of roughly chopped cilantro leaves, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Add the lid and then pulse the food processor several times until you have a smooth, but still slightly chunky texture. And side note, salsa verde is great on its own as a dipping sauce with tortilla chips or drizzling on my salmon tacos. And both of those recipes are on my website. So now that you've made the salsa verde, the rest is super easy. Add four chicken breasts to your crock pot or slow cooker, and then pour the salsa verde on top. Now, because my homemade salsa verde already has garlic and onion in it, we don't need to add much else, but I do add another one teaspoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of ground cumin, which helps to flavor the chicken. Mix that all together with tongs or your hands, and of course, I opt for my hands until it's all well combined. Add the lid to your crock pot or slow cooker and then set the timer for three hours on high or four to five hours on low. To make sure I can keep filming during daylight hours, I opted for high today, though I'll often set it for low and then let it switch to warming as well if I'm not quite ready for it. But once you are ready for it, use your tongs to remove the chicken breast to a cutting board. They should be super tender and nearly fall apart as you'll see on the last one that I remove. If they're not fall apart tender, you can always cook them for another 30 minutes. Then use two forks to shred them up. 
You can see how easily they shred, but if you know my shredded chicken hack, which is to place them in the bowl of a stand mixer with a paddle attachment and blend for a few seconds, you can do that as well to shred them up super quickly. You can see the steam wafting off the chicken, and the smell of the salsa verde mixed in with that is so tantalizing. I'll usually sneak a few pieces of shredded chicken and plop it in my mouth at this stage, just for testing purposes. But once that's all shredded, use tongs to transfer the warm chicken back to the crock pot or slow cooker to mix with the remaining salsa verde. And to finish it off, you can sprinkle some freshly chopped cilantro. This recipe is seriously about as easy as they come, especially if you swap in store-bought salsa verde, though do promise me you'll give my homemade version a try as well. And I love that it's just a big pot of ultra flavorful shredded chicken that's perfect for a variety of meals throughout the week. There's really so many different ways you can use this recipe, and I'd love to hear what you'd make with it in the comments below, but I'll show you two quick options. For the first one, add a few spoonfuls of rice to a plate, and I had a storage container of rice in my fridge, so just reheated a portion of that. Then add a good amount of the salsa verde chicken and a few slices of avocado, or you could add diced avocado on top as well, a dollop of sour cream, and a generous sprinkle of cilantro. It's a super easy rice bowl that comes together quickly and one of my favorite throw together dinner ideas. I guarantee that even the hungriest bellies will love this one. But if you're craving tacos, it's really easy to whip those up as well. Just add a portion of the super tasty crock pot chicken to some tortillas. And these are my homemade cassava flour tortillas, though you can use any you prefer. Then add a sprinkle of diced red onion, a sprinkle of diced avocado, and a sprinkle of cotija cheese or queso fresco. It's another dinner idea that comes together in a jiffy and also perfect for a taco Tuesday. Now, one last tip before I take my bite is that I'll often add a half a cup of sour cream to the cooked salsa verde chicken straight in the crock pot. It adds a creamy tanginess to the chicken that I absolutely love. I don't know which one I should go after first, maybe the tacos, because I will say that if the chicken is a little bit too juicy and it sits in the tacos for too long, your tacos are more likely to split. Um, but these ones are holding together well, except for the fact I'm dripping. So flavorful. It's definitely got a spicy kick to it because I did not take the seeds out of the Serrano peppers. So this has got like a lot of good flavor to it. I have to say that if you serve these up for a Taco Tuesday night, they will just get devoured. These things will disappear so quickly. There's so much flavor in it. It's super easy. This is great for feeding a crowd and everyone can just assemble their own taco in like a taco assembly line. You'll be golden. Now the rice plate or rice bowl is probably more of an example of what I would make on the regular, just because I usually have some meal prepped rice or some other veggies. This would be great on just a bed of spinach as well to make a salad, it would be delicious. I really do love the creaminess with the sour cream on this. So whether you add the sour cream into the entire batch of salsa verde chicken or you just add it either to a taco or on top of a plate or bowl. It really does make it tasty. In terms of other ways that you can use this salsa verde chicken, you could put it on nachos, put it in quesadillas. I was also thinking that you could put it in my white chicken chili. There's shredded chicken in that recipe. You could use this chicken instead of just regular shredded chicken. There's kind of an endless number of ways to use this salsa verde chicken. It just really amplifies the flavor of anything you add it to, gives it that really yummy, delicious Mexican flavor. I personally love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and video today. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your family and friends who love delicious chicken slow cooker recipes. And I will see you again in the next video.